ask you this week, this week, today, as we start into this, as we think about this, um, is uh, I want you to be thinking about a person and their name and their face. But the question is this, who? Who acts like sand in your gears? That's the question. I think almost all of us could name at least one person, right? Or uh, um, 20. <laughs> Who acts like sand in your gears? And to help you clarify this while you think about it, I'm talking about, um, you know, uh, your, your gears. Your gears are um, your, your life, your work, your attitudes, your health. Your gears, um, that's what I mean, those moving parts, your motion, your work, um, your list of things to do, the, the trajectory of your life. That's what your gears are, okay? I want to make sure you get this because I'm going to be talking about it for the next several minutes. Um, it, is, it is your goals, your happiness, your dreams, your attitude. Now, those are your gears, right? Your mental and spiritual health, um, your daily motion and work, living, doing, breathing, and acting. Who acts like sand in your gears? Picture that person. Name them. And it's um, specifically somebody who frustrates you. If you want to be even uh, uh, clarify this, you know, what's sand in the gears? Somebody who complicates your life. Somebody who just seems to suck the joy out of your living. Really, that's sand. Sand in the gears. Somebody who discourages you. Someone who just seems to always be carrying a fire extinguisher. And no matter how on fire and passionate you are and pumped up you are, they're just going to squirt you with the fire extinguisher. Or they're going to throw sand all over you, and they're going to put sand in your gears and burns you out and frustrates you, and you cannot do what God designed you to do. I want you to think about that person who's sand in your gears, your life, your work, your attitude, your health, your job, your household. And I'm going to invite you to be in prayer right now. Okay, I want you to think about that person. Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about people that frustrate us, as we think about people that complicate our life and just seem to, to, to gum things up and uh, make life difficult, make it hard, harder than it should be. Lord God, I pray for your patience. I pray that you help us to, to be patient with them. I pray, Lord, that you help us uh, to understand and to find the good. And Lord God, when we think about these people, we pray that you be with them and that you work through them. As hard as it is, Lord, we pray for the, those people that are sand in our gears. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you were able to picture somebody. And we just prayed for them. We just prayed for that person that you were thinking about. Okay? Now, obviously, what we want, what we want from other people in our life, the other people that we work with or share a household with or go to church with or that are in our life, what we want is we want people to be grease in our gears. Amen? We want people to help us. We want people to encourage us, support us, that will love us, that will assist us, that will lovingly correct us. Right? That's what we want. We want grease. So there's the other side of the coin. That's what we want. Because see, we know, you know this. I don't even need to tell you this, but, but I'm going to repeat it. Grease helps the gears move. Grease helps the gears move effortlessly, right? Grease is what's designed. God said, uh, you know, grease, right? And when the engineers and the people designed a machine, designed it, they said, well, there's going to need to be some grease in the gears because it'll just run more effectively. In other words, people who are grease in our gears of life help us to live better lives. They really do. So now I want you to take a moment. Now I want you to take a moment, and I want you to think about. I want you, to, in the same way that you thought about somebody that might be sand in your gears, now I want you to think about somebody who's grease in your gears, really. I want you to think about and picture in your head and name, name their name in your head somebody who encourages you, somebody who loves you, somebody who is positive in your life, somebody that lifts you up. Okay, everybody got it? You got that person in your head? Now I want to invite us to pray once again. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the grease, the people that you send that love me, that encourage me. And Lord, all of us, we thank God that you send these saints, these people that help, that help us live better lives. Lord, I thank you for them. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this morning here in the last couple minutes, you've had an opportunity to think about and to name people. One, two people, five people, 25 people, whatever it is. You've had an opportunity to either pray for patience and help when dealing with somebody that is sand in your gears, and you've had an opportunity, if you, if you followed along and if you participated, you've had an opportunity to thank God for somebody 
that is grease in your gears. Now I want to switch gears. I want to, I want to not switch gears. I want to turn a corner. If you think about all the people that are in your life, either in your household or in your workplace, the people that you come across, that you have a relationship, if they would have been here this morning and if they would have heard me uh, say what I said and gone through that exercise of praying for the sand and praying for the grease, would they have prayed for you? That's the big question and the big challenge. Who prayed for you this morning if they would have been here? If the people in your life that you interact with had been here, would anybody have been praying for patience in dealing with you? Really? That's tough, isn't it? Yikes. That's not a happy, feel-good sermon on Mother's Day, preacher. <laughs> right, Mother's Day is a secular holiday, and not everybody gets the privilege of being moms, so we don't preach about that. Amen? So we're talking about this today. We're talking about, are you sand or are you grease? Who prayed for you? Who prayed for patience in dealing with you because maybe some of the things you say or things you do or the ways that you act either at work or in your home or in the business place or in your church is sucking the life out of somebody and complicating things and discouraging people and st being a stumbling block. And in the other vein, who prayed for you? Thank you, God, because you're grease in the gears. See, that's rather a co confronting question, isn't it? But it's one that I want you to wrestle with, church. Am I sand or am I grease? I've been wrestling with it all week, so see, I'm bringing you along with me. Am I sand or am I grease? Let's unpack that a little bit more. In, in the gospel, we read about Peter, who was definitely sand, sand in Jesus' gears. We read about Peter, who was absolutely sand in Jesus' gears. That's a way to understand the gospel. Is that Jesus clearly and very intentionally said, here's what I'm here to do. And he said it to Peter. And he said it to the other disciples. He instructed them. They'd been hanging out with him for about three years. And Jesus said, look, here's what it's about. Here's what, here's what I'm on mission for. Here's what my purpose is, Peter and everybody else. Um, God, God needs people to be in right relationship with God. God needs people to, to understand that God is God and they're not. Right? Jesus said, I am here I am here to give you life, right? Jesus said, I'm here to die um, and, and to rise again so that people can find forgiveness of their sins and get back in right relationship with God. Jesus was clear with his intentions, his purpose, his mission. He told Peter in advance what he was all about, right? And the gears of that, let's, let's get that. You know, Jesus, I want to be clear on this. Jesus said, here's what my gears are. I'm here to preach, I'm here to teach, and then I'm going to be arrested, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be betrayed, and then I'm going to be arrested, then I'm going to be beaten, and then I'm going to be killed, and I'm going to be buried, and then I'm going to rise again. Jesus communicated what his gears were. Are you all still with me? He said, these are my gears. And what did Peter say? Peter said, no. Peter said, no way. No, you're not going away. Quit talking nonsense, Jesus. No, you can't do that. And let's understand, Peter was sand. Peter was doing everything he could to frustrate, complicate, burden, discourage Jesus from completing his mission. Y'all still with me? He was sand in Jesus' gears. Peter was sand in the gears. Peter tried to stand in the way of the advancement of God's way and God's work. And we need to really name that because that's what's going on. Is that Peter, and you've got to give him a break because he's just like we are. Peter was saying, Jesus, hey, we like hanging out with you. We like being with you, Jesus. We eat together. We travel together. We, we go back and forth. You teach us. We sit around the campfire together. We've watched you turn water into wine. We've watched you multiply the loaves and the fishes. Man, we don't want you to go anywhere. So on one hand, you can't blame Peter for being selfish. Amen? Can't blame him. But we got to see it for what it is. Is that Jesus had some very strong things to say to Peter about that, didn't he? Let's understand that is that Jesus had some very strong things to say to Peter about being sand in the gears of God's mission. And it didn't go well for Peter, right? He said, get out of my sight, Satan. Wow, that's not happy talk from Jesus. You still with me? That's not warm, fuzzy children and dogs follow Jesus wherever he goes. That's not a pat in the head. That's, that's Jesus being crystal clear to Peter and to us saying God is not pleased. God is not pleased when we are sand in God's gears and we stand in the way of the advancement of the kingdom of God and the ministry of Jesus Christ, the ways and the work of Jesus. That's what that's about. So what do we learn from that? What we learn from it is obviously about being grease. 
and that we have that choice. You have a choice. I have a choice. You can be sand or you can be grease. And I'm talking specifically now, turn another corner, is that we have a choice to be sand or to be grease in God's gears. We have a choice to be sand and to gum things up and slow things down and burn things out in the advancement of the ways and the work of Jesus Christ in this world. Or we can be grease. And we can make things run smoothly as God intended. See, this is deeper and wider and broader and all of that. Deeper and wider than just whether we are sand or grease in somebody else's gears. You still with me? Amen? Mm. Stay with me. See, this is deeper. Now, it matters. It matters, of course, it matters. If people who claim to be Jesus followers, if people audaciously and boldly take the name of Christian and put it next to theirs, yep, it still matters if we who call ourselves Christians are sand in somebody else's gears. I will say, yeah, that matters because I don't think God's pleased with that either. It's, he's not. And so that does matter. But what I'm talking about is a deeper, more serious issue. And that is, what if, what if we complicate what if we frustrate? What if we, by our actions and what we do and what we say, we people who are supposed to be Jesus' people, what if we are harming the cause of Christ in this community? What about that? And I say again, this is more serious than that. What if we, by what we do or don't do, by what we say or don't say, what if we are standing in the way of the advancement of the ways and work of Jesus Christ? What if we are sand in God's gears and we are ignorantly believing that we're not? Does God have happy things to say to us about that? No. Jesus addressed this, not just once, but Jesus was direct about this church to me to everybody who takes the name of Jesus. Jesus uh, had, had this to say in another place about it. He said, um, if anybody is sand in the gears and frustrates or causes a little one, a child or somebody new to the faith, if you cause somebody to stumble, says Jesus, it would be better for you to have a big rock tied around your neck and be thrown into the sea. Wow. Is that happy talk? No, it's serious. Whether we like it or not. And that's kind of scary. Jesus is saying, look, it matters. It matters what we say. It matters what we do. It matters how we act. And I'm not just talking about within these walls, because it's easy to be a Jesus follower inside these walls. I'm talking about when you go outside the walls and when you're in the Walmart parking lot, right? I'm talking about when you go to ball games. I'm talking about when you're in the bar hmm? or the casino. Are you still Jesus people? See, it matters how we act. And Jesus said again, if you are grease in the gears, God bless you. If you are sand in the gears, God says, Jesus says, if you're sand in the gears and cause other people to stumble, it would be better to be thrown into the sea with a big rock tied around your neck, which means you'd drown. Yes? Serious words. To stand in the way of God's work. That's the way to sum it up. And so it's that question again for every one of us in this room. Are you grease? Or are you sand? I'm trying to make that turn. There we go. Are you grease or are you sand? Let me, let, me, let me put it this way. Because all things are known to God. you believe that? Amen? Does God see all things? What does God see? Does he see sand? Does he see grease? Because see, I can fake you out and you can fake me out, right? We can put on the effect. We can go through the motions. We can say the right words. We can dress the right way. We can do all those kinds of things. But now let's get more serious about this, church, whether you like it or not, on Mother's Day. Does God see you as sand or as grease? Are we helping God be known in this community? Are we helping and promoting the way of Jesus Christ in this community? Are we promoting and doing the work of Jesus in this community? Are we sand or are we grease? Sand or grease, that's the choice today that I give all of us to wrestle with. And you know, one of the things that, that, that came up, it came up this week at our men's cell group. Men's cell group. And by the way, let me add this little plug. If you're associated with a cell group, which is a small group that meets every week and has made a covenant, a promise to pray for one another every week, if you've fallen off the horse, get back in the saddle in your cell group, brother or sister. Are you with me? 
Quit making excuses and find a way to get back into your cell group and go back to those people that love you. Find a way to get back there because that's something we do here that's not for me and it's not just for looks and it's not for going through the motions. It's something that helps mature you and helps you be grease in the gears. Amen? This week at our men's cell group, and men, you're invited to come to this. It's Tuesday, St. Mark's Community Center down at 12th and Bluff Street. You're invited to come. Stop by. This week, we had a powerful conversation about sand and grease. And somebody in the men's cell group said, you know what? Sometimes we are sand in the gears, and we don't even realize it. Yeah. See, it's that thing that sometimes, sometimes we're sand in God's gears. Sometimes we are gumming things up, slowing things down, and standing in the way of the advancement of the ways and work of Jesus. Sometimes we're standing in the way because we're passive. We're passive, and we're non-passionate. In fact, I would say the churches in the United States, even the churches in Dubuque, Iowa, are full of non-passionate people. What do you think? I think they're full of people who are going through the motions and somehow believe that if they've got their name in the membership book, that's good enough and got heaven made in the shade. And what we see over and over and over and what we see statistically, this is a fact, not my opinion, is that 80% of churches are dying or stagnant. I say that's because there are people, too many people, who are sand in God's gears and not grease. Not grease. We talked about this at Men's Cell and said, you know, being a passive, non-passionate Christian is just as much sand in God's gears as being an arrogant, self-righteous uh, Christian. Are you with me? It's like a horseshoe. Those two uh, poles are closer together than they are far apart. It's about being passive. And that's probably the biggest problem that that, that plagues us in the church right now. It's not the self-righteous, arrogant Christians. It's the passive, non-passionate Christians that are becoming sand in God's gears and keeping the machine from producing what it's supposed to produce. And so thus that call to not be like Peter, to not be like Peter and stand in the way of God's mission, but to join it and to be grease in the gears and help things move along. You know, how many of you have heard of Rick Warren? You know who Rick Warren is? You ever heard him? Participate, raise your hand. Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church out in California, 20,000 member church. Now, I look at that as a pastor and I say, man, 20,000 members, I bet Rick Warren's on cruise control, Right? I bet he's on cruise control. He's got 20,000 members. He can probably do whatever he wants to do. He probably only preaches like five times a year, right? And still gets paid. That's a joke. You can laugh. Thank you. Okay. I admire what Rick Warren said. You know, I don't read a lot of his stuff, and he wrote The Purpose Driven Life, and I've led studies of that. But I read something that Rick Warren said a couple weeks ago or whenever. It was a while back. And he was addressing sand and, and grease. He didn't use those words. Those are my words. But Rick Warren, Rick Warren stood up, and he looked at his 20,000-member Saddleback Church, and he said, quote, If you just want to passively sit around for the next 10 years and waste your life being a consumer, if you, church want to passively sit around for the next 10 years and waste your life on things that won't last, you probably should go find another church because you're not going to be comfortable here at Saddleback. Because in this church, says Rick Warren, I am coming after you to get mobilized for Jesus. Amen. And I read that and I said, man, I wish I had the guts to stand in front of my church and even repeat what Rick Warren said. Well, wait a minute, I just did, didn't I? Making sure, I'm seeing if you're paying attention and you haven't checked out to your Mother's Day lunch, okay? I read that and I said, man, that, that's audacious and I love that. And I am right 100% with this man because he's talking to Christians out in California, but he's telling the truth and he's talking about being Greece and he's saying passive Christianity, passive, non-mobilized Christianity is sand in Jesus' gears. And it's not advancing the kingdom of God one bit. It's gumming things up and breaking things down. You know, the other thing to understand about sand, because we've been talking about this for the last couple weeks, we've been talking about having burning bushes and being passionate and being on fire and truly, authentically being all in, not just going through the motions, right? Kim talked about it. I talked about it. I'm talking about it again. Talking about we can, we can choose to, to, to pick up a fire extinguisher and put out the burning bush, the call that God's put in our lives, or we can pick up the gas can and dump gasoline on it. Remember this? Yes? You know, when I was in the fire department, 
volunteer fire department for years down in um, Union County. About this time of year, we'd go out into the middle of nowhere to put out grass fires, right? A lot of grass fires. You know, we didn't carry water out there. You know what we had to put out grass fires with? Sand. We had shovels, right? I did that when I was 20. I don't think I could do it now, okay? We did use shovels, and I thought, yeah, sand extinguishes fires. Grease. You know what grease is made from? This is a petroleum product, like gasoline. Gasoline on your fire, grease in your gears. Folks, turn that last corner with me and understand what God has called us to do. Understand that grease is what God wants. God calls all people who take seriously the title of Christian, and I hope that's you, to actively and to authentically love God every day. And to actively and authentically love other people every day. And God calls all people who take the name Christian seriously to serve the world in the name of Jesus Christ every day, both within these walls and outside these walls. God calls all people who take the name Jesus to really, truly understand that Jesus is Lord of life. Not you, not me. Grease in the gears. So this week, leave you with these things. One, you're still called to catch fire. You're still called to catch on fire about the ways and the work of Jesus Christ if you're serious about being His follower. You're still called to be a gasoline thrower. And you're still called to throw gasoline on other people's fires. You're still called to be grease in the gears of others, even in your own lives. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Grease in your own gears, right? That's why we do things like cell group and worship. Be grease. Be grease in the gears and help the mission of Jesus advance. So this morning, one thing, thank God for the people who are trying to be holy grease in your gears. Don't let this week go by without thanking them, without thanking them for what they give to you in encouragement, support, prayers, and love. And the other thing is this week, may God help us, all of us, to be grease in God's gears. Really, this is bigger than us. It's bigger than our stuff that we worry about and work on every day. We're part of something bigger than us. So may God help us to be grease in God's gears. And you know how we start? You know how we start? Make sure that you're not sand in the gears of others. Are you with me? That's one thing you can do this week, church. Make sure you're not sand in the gears of other people. I'm going to invite us to be in prayer about that. Lord God, I pray that you help us with this because we can't do it by ourselves. It's too big. I pray that you help us, Lord. Help us not to steal the life from other people. Help us not to complicate other people's lives, Lord. Help us not to discourage people. But Lord, I pray that you help us to be a beacon of light. I pray that people look at us, Lord, and they understand that we belong to you. I pray, Lord God, that you will help us live our lives this week in ways that point back to you. Help us to be grease in your gears, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite us. To